This week on The Modified World, we bring you Precious Metals and Gemstones, part one. So stay tuned. So welcome to The Modified World, the weekly web show about body modification, the people who do it, the people who get it, and why it matters. I'm your host, J.C. Potts, I'm the senior piercer up at the world-renowned Pangea Piercing and the guy that's kind of known for making all these interweb videos. And this week, went over to the Windy City of Chicago, Illinois, and talked to our friend Micah Greeley over at Scylla Body Jewelry about the finer points about precious metals and gemstones. Well, first off, people have asked a lot of questions about it. You know, what's safe, what works, what doesn't and you know I think the first thing we ought to talk about is metals absolutely have you had any experience with uh, argentium silver I've had a lot of experience with argentium silver argentium silver is awesome for in my opinion in the body industry uh, larger gauge hanging jewelry things like that um, anywhere where it's constricted and and uh, tends to come in contact or create an environment that's a little more moist, i.e. sweat and things like that, that's when it starts to tarnish. And yes, argentum silver does tarnish less than regular silver, but it's still a risk and it still should never be worn in a nostril or in a septum. Probably shouldn't be worn in a mouth uh, for all of these reasons. You know, and it's one of those, is everybody going to have a problem with it? Probably not. It's been our motto to uh, to not use anything that could potentially harm our clients or put them in a position where their piercings are compromised. So by eliminating it from uh, from our, our metal space, then we just we eliminate that issue. Yeah, because I've wondered about that myself. I've uh, you know I've seen pieces here and there made from you know I mean we've all seen the sterling silver stuff, and yeah. let's be honest, sterling silver is not something you really want to wear in a piercing long term. It's great yeah. for like large gauge plugs, something you're going to take out all the time. You're right, some hanging all pieces, day. things like that, the decorative stuff, the things you, it's not your everyday wearing right. stuff, and certainly not anything you're going to pierce or stretch with. No, you know? no, and I think argentum silver falls in that category as well. It tarnishes less, but it still tarnishes and that tarnish can cause problems. People all the time are asking about other safe white alloys too. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's a huge gamut with that. Say yeah. in, the, in, the, in the realm of 14 karat gold, you know, it's 52.5 parts silver, or, mm -hmm. or not silver, 52.5 parts gold, the rest of it's other stuff now. Yeah. You know, like in the case of palladium white, it's palladium and gold, two inert metals, Yep. No problem. Now it's not going to be as dead steely white as what a lot of people were expecting from white gold. It has kind of a more buttery appearance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, it's totally safe to stretch with, to safe to pierce with, yeah. all that good stuff. However, though, you see a lot of the stuff, you know, with uh, various degrees of nickel in it, you know? Most Traditional white gold is actually made with nickel. So, like you mentioned, the palladium white, any white that we use is always palladium white. Again, mm -hmm. it just, it eliminates the possibility of using an alloy that's gonna compromise somebody's piercing. Again, is everybody gonna have a problem with white gold with nickel? No, but you know, some people are, you know, have titanium reactions. Yeah. You can't be sure. So what we do is we try to lessen the risk. Absolutely. And I think that's what most body piercers strive to do. Mm -hmm. Use methods, materials, and things to lessen the risk for the clients. You know, and well, and I can tell you from personal experience that even with the 14 karat alloys that I've tried wearing 14 karat balls on my tongue piercing. Mm -hmm. I've tried wearing 14 karat rings in my lip and they turn orange in five days and yep. it feels like I have a battery in my mouth the entire time. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yep. Now, you know, so I'm sitting here telling you from experience that, you know, on my own self that it just doesn't work for everybody. Now it doesn't work for most people. Sure, the vast majority of people, I would even say. Yeah. I've never heard had anybody ever have a complaint before like that. But, you know, the sure enough way to avoid that is, you know, use 18 karat or higher and, right. you know, or use something that doesn't have any copper in it because mm -hmm. apparently that's what does it. Yeah, usually when we see anything tarnishing like that or to that extent, uh, it's, it's, it's always the copper. Copper is the, the biggest mm -hmm. culprit with all of that. 
and it's really hard to find alloys of gold that don't have any copper in it. You know, and if you want a yellow uh, yellow alloy, you know, under 22 karat, yeah, you're, you're going to be get getting some, some copper. copper. That's just how it is. But of course, 22 karat's totally fine. Absolutely. It's, commonly, it's 90% gold, 10% silver. You know, no other constituent metals. It's hard enough to hold stones. It's a real dense, rich yellow color. I yep, love, and you find that the as, the, as the spectrum goes, uh, gets higher to closer to 24, you get that deeper yellow tones. Mm. As a matter of fact, in India, it's not even legal to sell anything that's not 22 karat. Really? Yeah. Then they only get paid by weight, not by complexity. Ah. So the Indian jeweler has become a master at doing repairs, <laughs> you know, and getting a lot of money for those repairs. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, you know, hey, you, you know, that's the, and that's something I always tell people is you're going to pay some way. You know, you can pay with low quality or with something that you bought that isn't going to actually do the job that you wanted it to do. Or you can spend a little bit more and get something that's exquisite. Once again, yeah. you know, you get what you pay for and know what you're getting before you jump into it. Mm -hmm. How about palladium, platinum? You ever work with any platinum? <clears throat> I don't work with a lot of platinum. As it gets bigger, it actually, you gotta weld it. Some smaller stuff, some repairs, uh, little tiny nostril stuff I can do with platinum. But if they're looking for that same color, uh, we'll just use palladium. Because mm -hmm. you can solder palladium. It's strong and it's got a lot of the same properties as platinum. And it looks almost identical. Yeah, when it's you a platinum it group metal. Exactly. It's literally, it's next to it on the periodic table. So mm -hmm. it's, you know. Well, and also too, as a as an investment thing, when you take that titanium piece out of your nose, it goes into a drawer. It reminds you of how cool it was to be young. Now, when you take out that precious metal piece, those diamonds, that that gold, that palladium, turns out you can sell it as scrap. You can remelt it. You can do something cool with it. Turn it into an engagement ring. There's all kinds of things you can do. The bottom line is you do not lose the value in it, and yeah. it only goes up. It only goes one direction and that's up. In the time that I've been making jewelry, palladium has gone from $200 an ounce to $600 an ounce. Mm -hmm. Gold has gone from something like $800 an ounce to $1,600 an ounce. It's trading higher than what platinum was when I first started on all this. It's interesting that when it comes to the things that actually go inside of your body, rings, necklaces, bracelets, they're surface wear. They don't, they don't actually Interact with your bloodstream. Exactly. Hello. Yeah. You know, everything else, the body jewelry, you know, you're paying for something that's going inside of your body. It's going, it's going inside your mouth sometimes, you know, it's going inside your mouth, it's going inside your nose, it's going inside of a hole that you've created. So it's not just getting worn on your fingers or on your neck, you know? Mm -hmm. Something else I wanted to touch on too while we're here is, you know, know where you're getting your precious metal jewelry from too. Just because something's made out of 14 karat or 18 karat and has diamonds in it does not mean by any stretch of the imagination are they all made equal you know you'll what we what we see generally in the mall from the you know the finer jewelry stores in the mall you uh it sounds great but then you get home you find the pieces hollow you know it's you know not sure exactly what all is in alloy once again it's 14 karat only means it's a little over half gold who knows what's in the rest of it and the worst thing, and this drives me insane, is, oh look, it's stamped 14K right here on the wearing surface. On the biggest, emptiest space they can find. Yeah, and, and we understand, but that's once again, you're dealing with traditional jewelers trying to operate in a realm that they don't really understand. Right, you don't want any markings on your wearing surface. I don't care if it's 24 karat, you don't want any stampings, any markings, anything that mars the wearing surface. If I'm not gonna make it myself, then I'm going to get it from Micah. If you really owe it to yourself to check out his website. What is your website exactly? The website is www.sillajewelry.com. Well, I'll tell you what though, if, you if, you're, if you're not derelict in duty, then you're probably already following me on Instagram. You already got me on your Facebook. You already got me on your Tumblr. And pay attention. You'll be seeing stuff from Scylla Jewelry. I've already put some stuff up, but you'll be seeing more. And let us know what other questions would you happen to have about precious metals and fine gemstones. It's too much information for just one video. So I'll be back next week with more about precious metals and actually talk about some gemstones. We do this every Monday. So if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe so you don't miss anything.
course, we give away swag to engage subscribers. So leave me a comment in the section down below letting me know what you think. Or hit me up on Twitter, or Tumblr, or Facebook, Google Plus if you have one. And of course, be sure to stop back by next week for another episode of The Modified World. <laughs> Wamp, 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 wamp